All right. All right, so the mics are on. Glasses full. This is Craft Beer Ballers. What's going on, guys? How's it going? Fine. How are you? Good, good. So this is our quarantine edition. Um, you know, it's slightly apocalyptic because because we can't get Kevin's camera on or whatever. But it's okay. We're gonna make it happen. Um, so so you can't you can't see Kevin, but he is here. I promise you. You can hear me. Um, I can. You can hear him. His voice is there. That's him. Uh, but we also have Dave and Steve from Florida Beer Blog. How are y'all doing today? Good. How are you? Uh, doing okay, man. We're doing. We're dealing with some technology issues, but we're gonna work for, through it. The beer works. That's what's the important part. It works, and so um, you know we're gonna go on from there. So what's everybody drinking? Let's start with that. Um, I guess I will start and, <coughs> and I will start by coughing. Um, I actually, like I was saying before earlier, I ended up going to BJ's for dinner last night because they had some special where if you purchase something, you could actually get a, get a pre-made cooler meals for like $6. So might as well. And they actually had a bunch of their beers in uh, either crawler or growlers or bags for actually not too bad a price and they actually have gallons but i couldn't go through a gallon so i ended up getting a half gallon of their honey box seasonal which i figure is brewed at brew hub anyways so yeah, it yeah, works yeah for that's me. true yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. not too bad not too bad so all right steve what are you drinking i am going for the indigenous bastards ipa from a lot ale 7.3 ish percent Super smooth, really nice taste. Nice, 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 good. Solid beer, solid beer. Uh, so, all right, so Kevin, what do you got? Oh, uh, I'll crack open. Uh, this is actually uh, Tampa Bay Brewing Company's, I, I think it's actually a collaboration. It's the uh, Raspberry Drip Imperial Stout. Nice, nice. And so that's pouring in here. And I uh, got a couple of cookies to pair with it. Nice. Jeez. What type of what type of uh, what, what type of cookie? What's the the cookie situation looking chocolate like? Chocolate chip. Just just a chocolate chip. Uh, I I had some fudge about a week ago with it pairing that, but the fudge was just way too sweet. So I'm hoping that some uh, some chocolate chip cookies that my son still hasn't eaten yet are still okay. Mm. Nice. Okay. Okay. Mm. Nice. Very good. Very good. Well, as I, we mentioned off the air, I am drinking. Um, I think I found a new love for fruited sours, and so. As I did Good. earlier this, it was actually earlier this week. I am drinking another prairie beer. I'm drinking the uh, Blueberry Boyfriend, uh, which is a, uh, it's a sour ale with blueberries and lemon zest. Um, I taste a little bit of that. It's uh, it's probably if you are really into the sours, it's probably not quite sour enough for you, but it's very fruity and it's. Um, I had a guava, their guava last week, which was phenomenal. It was just so good. It was literally just gliding down my throat. It was great. Uh, nice. This is a little more, it's like, it's not quite as good, but it's actually, you know, it's pretty solid. It's pretty easy to drink. Um, lawnmower beer, uh, you know, hot weather beer. So it, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I, I, I'm, I am, as I evolve in my beer drinking journey, I think, I think sours, at least fruited ones might become a little bit more part of the, um, of the rotation. So nice. yeah, works. yeah. So the first thing I want to ask you guys is just um, like, what, okay, so, and I've, and I've asked this just about everybody we've talked to so far, we've talked, and we've talked to people, different parts of the state, different parts of the country, whatever, what's kind of the vibe around breweries in South Florida, like in terms of what's going on, and obviously there's, it's, a, it's a, probably a slightly more heightened situation in South Florida than, than, than where we're at in Central Florida or whatever. Uh, how are they surviving? What's this? What's the talk? I mean, you talk to you, you guys, especially have talked to a lot of people. So, uh, what's kind of the, what's kind of the vibe? I don't know. I can't get into them. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. I said the I handful of breweries I've been to have been really good. With they, they rolled right into the takeout and drive-through method of of running. Um, they've all had canneries already. I don't think anyone, any of them down here have really just started their cannery up, but they, they really did, like their websites were ready to go from day one, it seemed, and they, they 
didn't even flinch other than their staff is now not working and all that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 So everybody's kind of going, gone that way. Is there anybody, I mean, are there, there going to be any, any casualties <laughs> that we know of in terms of, of, the, of the breweries or just, I think everybody, you think everybody's going to kind of sort of ride the, ride the storm out. I think they'll write it. I don't know. I doubt anybody's really going to close. It may take people a little while to get kind of on their feet again, back to the full speed, but I don't think anybody's really going to close. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, mean, I will say it's been interesting to see what some people are doing because it's not just the beers, but the events that are happening. And so one of the breweries that's close to Steve and I, Bang and Banjo, they, um, for example, they, they ended up getting a huge shipment of eight ounce stubby cans. And so they've been doing, you know, kind of what you're doing, Kevin, they actually were going to have their beer and cookie pairing last weekend. And so they made it a prepackaged event to go. So you basically go that you know, order it online and then they've got the stubbies with the beer samples that you're going to have. And on there is written which cookie you pair it with. Um, it, it's weird little things like that that I think are really going to help out some breweries with survival. That's interesting. That's an interesting way to do it. Because that's, yeah, because obviously pairings is a big part of this. And it's a big part of what we talk about on our show. And yeah, that's, yeah, well, obviously, yeah, that's that's a part of all of this that's been kind of, Gone by the way, the wayside is is mm. is events and pairings and stuff like that. There's more. It's one thing just to go to your brewery on a on a Saturday night and you know have a few or whatever. But then there, but there's another thing in terms of anniversary um, events, like I think oh, releases and yeah, bottle releases, stuff like that. You know, because I think there's depending on how far this goes, we're starting to creep up on a few anniversaries up here. Um, yeah. I believe Corporate Ladder in, down in, in Lakewood, I think their second or third, is, it's either would have just passed or it's coming up. Uh, Copper Tails is like somewhere towards the beginning of the summer. Um, so is 81 Bays also somewhere at the beginning of the summer. Uh, there's, there's a few things, and, and these have been big events, like uh, Copper Tails especially. They've, they've had, they had some pretty huge events for, um, for, their, for their anniversaries, and so... The um, people that I'm actually more concerned about are the ones that are about to open. And there have been a few that was like they just opened, or actually there was one in uh, Lake Park, which is in northern Palm Beach County. They just opened yesterday. They actually had their grand opening. Wow. So I'm a little, a little concerned for some of that, which is Yeah, uh, yeah. That's a, that is an issue for us, too. Um, I believe... I think Bayborough, it's over in St. Pete's side. I think he was supposed to open and they didn't. Um, a guy that we interviewed last week, uh, Keith uh, from Bayer Beer Bloggers, um, he mentioned it earlier because he, he knows a lot of those guys on the St. C- uh, Clearwater St. Pete's side. And so they're struggling, you know, they're struggling because they can't open. Um, we were in our, in my part of town, uh, there's a, a, a beer, a, a budding brewery call, uh, called Astro Brew Company. And they are going to build out a space not far from where I from where I live, oh, nice. and we're gonna we're actually going to do a few shows with them, kind of sort of like a making of the brewery uh, type thing with them. And we'll still do it. It's just um, obviously a lot of this has put that in doubt. And then and Jay Jones, uh, former uh, head of um, of Eight One Bay, uh, former head brewer over Eight One Bay, he's starting his brewery uh, kind of in the Tampa Heights area. Um, mm-hmm. and I believe that's on hold too. And that was a big deal. That's a, that's a, cause he's a well-known entity and, and there's some, some money, some venture money put behind it. And so, um, I, I talked to him at, at Brewer's Ball and he was all excited, but that was, Brewer's Ball was like exactly three right. days before all this went down. So, like, you know, um, so yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's that. Mind, year, if you that, had like, cause it pre- like one of us had a brewery that was opening right now, we would have to have funding behind us. Right. I feel like I would be pushing to let's just hold off. <laughs> but the funding would be pushing to let's get you open and start making some money. Correct. And, and I feel like it's like I feel like you're in a lose-lose situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. I would, 
I'm See, sorry, then there's, we, we have a brewery down here called uh, Kofner's that they were in the middle of just moving to a brand new location and they hadn't even opened yet. And then all this went down, like yeah. they were probably maybe a week from opening. So what do they do now? Yeah. Yeah. I, and that's a perfect example I'm talking about. I feel like I would be almost saying, man, let, let's just, let's just look, you've got, we've got a lot invested in this, but let's be smart. You know, I feel like you tighten the belt if, if you can. And I right. feel like that would be the decision I'd be trying to lean toward. Yeah, do, yeah. do it right the right way when it matters and when it's because you're not gonna you're not gonna grow your brewery to be super successful until you see some of this change. Right. Yeah. So I mean I, I wouldn't want to come in doom and gloom. I'd want to be as positive as possible, obviously, but I feel like, man, we gotta do it the right way. We want yeah. people to come here, have a good time, enjoy our product, feel safe, and feel like they can come back. And I feel like you're gonna kill your rep potentially if you don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing you have to, it, it's going to require a different strategy. Um, Cause we, this, all of this will pass. We, we will, breweries will open again. If nothing else, cause people want it, <laughs> you know, people and people with the money want yeah. it. So they, they will open again. It's just, you want, yeah, it sees the opportunity to make it, you know, to make it viable. Obviously if you have, if you, if you produce good liquid, you're going to be fine no matter what. Um, and then obviously I, I my as I see it, the other piece of this is just making people feel safe. You know, like people feel that they are gonna be safe being in your brewery or whatever, that that's an advantage. You know, if you pay close attention to that and make good liquid, then you're you're gonna be an advantage. And really truly, you know, there's a lot of breweries out there that obviously have a big rep already. And so you're always facing that, but you know, how how can you combat that? Hey, go, Kevin! Go, go, go. Kevin, <laughs> that, look at that beautiful face. Yes, there you couldn't go. Tell you, couldn't tell you why it works versus why it didn't before. I knew it was going to work eventually. I wasn't even worried. Um, but yeah, so well, so you know, here's the best part about the fact that the camera just came on, and I'm going to slightly take over the conversation here because <laughs> if you all three look on Facebook. I was forced into a private Facebook group by the Sanford Brew Crew, and if you've never followed them, <laughs> um, Your chug crew. Yes, so I'm literally being forced to like invite all three of you into it, which means that we now have to open and chug a beer live on this show, so that way we can get our credentials for the group. So, well, what are I'm you? I'm drinking chugging? a twelve percenter. <laughs> oh Jesus! So I think I think I need something else. I warned you. <laughs> okay, well, go get you something else. So I am going to be opening my. Bottle. I think I have something. I'm almost He's got a hard seltzer. He's opening now. <laughs> not a hard seltzer. This is Mango India from Days of Sir, which is a oh, nice in bed, huh? Yeah. Okay. And it's what is this at? It's only at four point eight. It's really yeah, mine's at seven point three. I should be okay. Yeah. Oh man! All right, so I just finished mine. I am actually gonna grab. I'll wait till Kevin gets back. So at least. Bud Light like time. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go buy. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab my Bud Light right quick. My my uh, Paps. Um, have, you have a PBR? <laughs> no. I, I showed I showed my wife today a picture of the uh, PBR 99 pack at uh, Costco. I'm like, I want one of those. I don't I don't know why. I just want it. Yeah. Oh man. I've been waiting to cook with this. It's a limited edition Bud Light from guessing the Super Bowl probably a couple. No, nice. you are gonna get Bud Light. Oh my god! Hold on, I got real beer. I was waiting oh, I got you, to man. cook with it. So that's and two people drinking are. Budweiser beers. <laughs> yeah, but I'm. Here you are, lightening my uh, my cooking prowess uh, inventory during a pandemic. During a pandemic, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the date on this is actually February seventh, two thousand sixteen. So no, you won't be able to drink that. It's wow. skunk. <laughs> so this wow. is actually an aged uh, Bud Light. You know, I, I hear they age well, right? Yeah. <laughs> All that water content. Do, does something really age badly if it already tastes bad to begin with? <laughs> I, I guess the question is, does it age well if it tastes bad? Um, All right, so you did not. mention that you had to pick something light. So yes. I went to the store today and I got the Copper Tail. Oh, nice. A lager. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Right, gentlemen, are you so, ready? So what this was supposed to taste like. <laughs> Yeah, what that was supposed to taste like. That's what this is. Hold on, I'm pouring it in a glass. I, 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 I kind of want to see you spit it out on camera. <laughs> oh, shit. No. no hold on. Oh, fuck, dude. Hold on. I don't, know if, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell if it's actually tasting correctly or not. I feel like I feel like this thing's been sitting here for, I think we had a Super Bowl party years ago. And that's what it's from. 
Oh, that's funny. I'm sure, that's yeah. So, so it's either it's either this or uh, a two-hearted. And I feel like that's no. just wasteful to just to chug a two-hearted. No, no, don't do that. Hold on, I think I ripped the tab off of this thing. Now, um, hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> it's gonna pop open this beer now. That's amazing. But man, I would have I would have picked up lager from Tim. Right, Bay. Dave. I was at Total Wine yesterday. You could have warned me about this. Surprise. <laughs> Um, I guess we're the douches for just going along with it. So. Right. So are we like killing so, brain so cells for Will this get us into this Facebook group uh, then? Awareness? Yes, yes it will. Yes, yes it, it will. Into the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny that you mentioned the Anheuser-Busch and everything. There is a movie. I wish I could... Is this it? Oh, what is the name of this awful, that looks, awful That looks movie. very light and refreshing up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is actually pretty good. Are we going? Uh, yeah. Go. All right. All right. So Kentucky Derby style. Have a Kentucky Derby day, by the way. Nice. Uh, be safe. Yeah. Horsey, right. horsey. Let's go. Three, two, one. Smell about, about as normal. <sighs> yeah. That, that was terrible. Yeah, that, yeah. When's the last time True. you had one of those, Kevin? Oh, gosh. Um, probably at a, at a cookout playing uh, Thunderstruck. Nice. Oh, yeah. 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 I, just had, I, nice I, just, I didn't bring it. I would have had to gotten it from someone else to have something to drink. To a really nice 7.3%. That's a good, that's actually a good oh, question. Good. When's the last time you had like a crazy cheap beer? We um, used to play kickball, crazy. so. Well, we used to play well, kickball, so like back in our kickball days. I think might... Coral Springs Charters holiday party, was it? We are drinking Bud Light or Corona, one of the two. You were drinking Corona. I yeah. would rather drink water. Yeah, you would drink yeah. nothing. Because you have to realize, I love water. I will <laughs> yeah. drink it. Like, in, in, so if I, <laughs> I, like if I like to be hydrated. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I'm, I'm having to chase that with a 12%. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> you get and that taste out of like, your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I have absolutely no problems with being a beer snob. And if I can't find a beer worthy enough to be drunk, I, ha I will be okay with water. It's, it's just who I am, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I, um, the last time I've had a really cheap beer, uh, like I said, we used to play kickball. And I, I stopped playing almost a year and a half ago. And I remember, like, I will, I, we played adult kickball. There's, like, all these stupid things you got to do. So one of the things you have to do is you um, – ref a, a game like I'll, I'll like i have to like i'll be like, a, like it's the same rules as baseball so it's like the third base ref or whatever and i was there and i drink all the beer that i brought and i was and i was like you want to talk about snob like <laughs> most people in kickball like it's literally the ceiling is like yingling right like uh -huh. the ceiling like am i lying kevin the ceiling he's not lying <laughs> so i would bring all types of crazy shit all the time like really expensive really heavy stuff yeah. And then, so I, I drink it all. I'm out there. I'm drunk. I drink it all. All right. And, and, and now, so, now you at the field, but you're playing flip cup like at the bar afterwards. Right. So I, I might play a flip cup with a black and tan. Yeah. 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 So I, I would say. The first so time I, I ever played quarters, it was with an imperial stout. And that was a go. tough evening. And, mm. and now you drink nothing but water and beer. Right. <laughs> and I wasn't right. good at quarters either. But continue, Johnny. You're in the middle of a story. Yeah, so like, so I'm out and I'm just like, so I text, we have this text thread. I'm like, I need a beer. If I'm going to sit here for another hour and freaking watch, you know, ref assholes play kickball, mm -hmm. then I'm going to need something to drink. And so I was like, yeah. oh man, you know, I was like, hey, please, someone send me a beer. Someone come to third base on field two and send me a beer, right? So the guy, this guy comes up, he's like, hey man, you know what? I got you. I got you. Here are these two Mick Ultras. You're yeah. cool. You're gonna need high end, baby. <laughs> like, I like. Uh, thanks. <laughs> you know, like it's great. Well, you know, Johnny, I've got a theory to spin off of this. When you say cheap, you can get a can of Boatswain Double IPA. It's like a buck a can. It's great beer too. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's Trader Joe's, right? Yeah, Trader Joe's. I, I wouldn't Trader say it's. A, I mean, I, I guess I'm it's kind not of great, but place. it's, it's not, like it, it's not a terrific Double IPA. It's better than a Bud Light. They do okay, though. Yeah, I've tried drink some. I've drank some Trader Joe's beers. They, they do okay. Yeah, it's, it actually kind of reminds me. The cheap beer that I have recently is when Lucky's was still around. They had this like 
American Lager, which was five bucks for a six pack. It was still higher quality than Budweiser, but it's like, you know, yeah. And of course they all closed, so everything was half off. So I got got a six pack for like two fifty. Wow. Um, oh, nice. Not bad. Not <laughs> used bad. a couple to cook with, and they still have a couple. There you go. So we're going to grab a beer right quick. So carry on conversation by yourself. Yeah, Kevin, host the host <laughs> beer. <laughs> cooking. cooking with beer, I, I think it's underrated. Oh, uh, so oh beer can and chicken is amazing. Tend, absolutely. I tend to like to grill. So if I'm going to make like sausage or a bit, probably the only way I can really eat hot dogs is if I uh, first boil them in a, in a pan. With a pipe. Mm. So I take the, put the beer in there. Probably like some really super spicy mustard or horseradish, uh, mm -hmm. like bay leaves, uh, sauerkraut. So get to get that concoction and then put your hot dogs, your wieners, your sausage, whatever in there. So you basically boil it in beer and then you pull it out and just char the outside. So it doesn't shrivel up like, mm. uh, like hot dogs will if you just put them straight on the grill. Interesting. And I, um, we were interviewing somebody and I was taking a look at his website, and they have a recipe for oatmeal uh, beer pancakes. Yes, the pancakes, then. Yeah, so I, I need to kind of raid my fridge and see if I've got one and kind of use that tomorrow because it sounds pretty amazing. Um, so are we now indoctrined into the Sanford group? Group, uh, does this, this chugger say chug yeah, crew? This be, uh, crew, crew, crew. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm I just say, if I keel over and start yelling for help, it probably was the poison, but the actually, Bud Light, yeah, Bud Light, yeah. Yeah. Was sitting uh, in your fridge for three years, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, technically four years plus. <laughs> Holy cow, my four years, yeah, there, there's a date on here, man, that can February, wow. February Amazing. 7, 2016. <laughs> Super Bowl 50. Wow. Wow. Was it a Super Bowl party that you drank that or? I, I don't, somebody brought it here and left it. Probably so. It's probably from a Super Bowl party. Someone probably brought it here and left it here. Jeez. Yeah. It's because I don't buy that. Like, I, I won't even cook with that. But if yeah, it's here, yeah. you leave it behind, I probably will cook with it. it and yeah. it's funny because when I go to a friend's house, I usually leave beer at their house, but it's always like three daughters or. Right. Jay Wakefield, like, like any twist beer. or yeah, or, or, yeah. Okay. And then they they text me like three weeks later, like I drank that beer you left in my fridge. It was amazing. Like, well, yeah, drink like, good beer and you'll have that all the time. I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's you'll amazing. Get used to that. It's yeah. like it's like I ate the food you left behind and it was amazing. Like, yeah, well, I just use better ingredients. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's all I, I did. Know. You know, it's funny that you mention that. Now. I'm taking a look. One of the things that I actually tried to watch a couple of times on a flight over the other side of the country some months ago it's a movie called kings of beer and apparently what budweiser does is every year each budweiser brewery in the world sends their beer to the home office in st louis and the master people in st louis judge whose is the most accurate and best of all, all the different Budweiser's. And it's kind of funny to watch because it is clearly a Budweiser commercial. Right. And they're all talking about like, oh, you know, this one has this quality and this one has this and, you know, which is the best. And in the back of my mind, I'm going, your beer tastes skunked. That's yeah. what you're aiming for. It's like, right. When, when the first ingredient that they talk about that you see is rice, yeah. come on. Like, come on. So, it's a bunch of white guys sitting around talking about making beer and the number one ingredient is rice. Oh, believe it or not, it's not all white guys. It's not? <laughs> it's not all white guys. Okay. Um, and in the, fact, one of the breweries that they sort of follow is in mainland China. And there's one uh, one black, it, it's, it's all the brewmasters at each of the breweries. One is a black female. And then one's this white woman who like henpecks the living heck out of her boyfriend as he forces her as she forces him to try to make a Budweiser clone in their kitchen and in the back of my mind I'm going first of all everything is wrong you're not sanitizing anything and second of all <laughs> could you start with a, like something that has flavor please just just get a Mr. Beer kit yeah right it's good yeah I tell anyone who wants to get into trying to make beer that we'll start with start with an ale and probably probably go with something with a pretty dark malt profile you're gonna have a lot more room for error just to make it drinkable you know and and it's like it's like a food 
when you take a food recipe and you make it, you probably do about as 80% as good as you did if you did it like three, four, five times. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. So just make something that maybe you can actually drink without right. harming yourself or anyone else. Yeah, yeah. So I just looked and apparently this um, Kings of Beer is streaming for free on Amazon Prime. Oh, I'm going to watch that now. Oh, man. <laughs> right when this but is over. But it's funny because like it, it goes into like the hit, like how to make beer and it's Charlie Bamforth. I'm like, okay, he's amazing. Why can't you just have the movie be about him? Um, but it just it gets really awkward. It's badly edited, and they're not even hiding the fact that it's just a massive advertisement for a substandard for beer. Yeah, yeah, and and right. I, I can't help but thinking immediately that you have to cold ferment a lager, right? And that that's pretty hard to do with home ingredients and a home setup. Well, like, it's also have like a fermentation really, chamber. Yeah, like, it's really hard to do in Florida. <laughs> something to get it, you know, and, and I can only get down to about 40 degrees. Right. So yeah. trying to get it as low as it needs to be to get it that cool, I'm going to sound like a damn infomercial, but cool, crisp, clean, blogger. Crisp, clean, yes. That, that's, that's hard to do. It's a hard mm -hmm. beer to make. And Which is uh, probably why it tastes skunky most of the time. Yeah, because they're you're trying to mass produce it, and obviously, if you if you can have a whole nation's worth of brewmasters coming, a convention worth of brewmasters coming, they all making they're all making Bud heavy, Bud light, <laughs> you right. know. But if you want to drink a light, beer, very, like, drink a light beer, to drink a Kolsch. Why, yeah. why why have why have this standard American style lager with questionable ingredients? So I will ask a question then. Um, you're at a brand new brewery never been in there, haven't heard anything about them. You've got a huge tap list in front of you. What style do you go for first? How drunk am I? You are stone cold sober. You oh. just walked in first place of the day. I, 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 I like ABV. having an answer first. It's easy for me. Easy. I, I look at ABV immediately and I, I, I think, of, well, do you have a DIPA? Do you have like a stout? Do you have something I have with a totally clean palate that I'm going to actually want to see if I enjoy it? So I would probably start that direction. Yep. All right. Actually, two. There are two directions that I go into, just depending on what my feeling is, how much time I have, if I'm on vacation, different factors. If it's just a quick, like, okay, I'm just going to go in and try something, I am a hundred percent trying their IPA, because everybody does an IPA, and yeah. if I just want to hang out and drink and socialize. Maybe I'm socializing with people who maybe aren't as into beer, but for my benefit, they're at a brewery or whatever. Um, matter of fact, case in point, very easy case in point. All right, I had never been to Cricket Thumb Brewery before. Uh -huh, um, they're great. Had, I love them. Yeah, what's up? I love I hear them. You. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're phenomenal. Real good, good people, good beer or whatever. I'd never been, and I had to go for a work thing because I um, we, uh, we went to see the Phillies uh, spring training as a, for a work event. Mm. Close to, and afterwards, people were like, oh, let's go this, this, and that. And I was like, oh, let's – I won't go to a brewery. I just throw, let me throw that out there. And I'm like, holy shit, yeah, we should do that. And I'm like, what's the closest thing? And as it turns out, it was Cricket Thought. And I've never, I've never been, so I went, right? So I just had an IPA because I didn't have a lot of time. I only could only be there for like an hour before I had to drive back, drive back to the Shade Tree? What'd you have? I had not their main, not Shade Tree. They have one that they pretty much just only do on site. Mm -hmm. It's the other one. And I had that one, and it was, and it's way better in Shade Tree, to tell you the truth, actually. Not surprised. Yeah, yeah, it's because it's because they make it there. So, yeah. uh, so eyes IPA. Now, if I'm out of town, I got plenty of time, got all the time in the world, whatever. Then I just want to try whatever they, whatever they're most proud of. And I'll yeah. tell, and then when you, and when you tell, when you ask them that, they're immediately going to go to what their flagships are, and yeah. and so you got to kind of know what their flagships are, and, and you have to tell them, look, no, no, I don't. I don't want that. I want like what we don't play like. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Exactly. And so I just like no, I don't want that. Like, what do you guys? What do you? What do? You, what would you drink from here? Like, like you know, I mean, you drink shit all the time. What would you drink from here? Right. <laughs> and so, and then that, and then that will open up all types of doors. And you gotta be ready for some shit you might not like. Um, but honestly, that's. I don't know, man. When I'm on a vacation, I get to go to a brewery. That's a vacation to me. To be able to just try, like, okay, I find out that the brewery in St. Augustine has some crazy 
stout that I had no idea that they had, you know, and I would have known had I not asked because they were just going to push in the same shit down in my throat. And so, and so that's, yeah, that's, that's what I do. All right, Steve, where do you have it? Oh, I go to IPA every time. Okay. That's I, just my go-to. I, I know the flavor. I know the profile. Yeah. I know where it's going. But that's the part that bothers me. You're not going to be able to talk to somebody there who probably will give you the information. Cause I want to know, like, I want to smell it. I want to like, I'm like, Hey, what's the hot profile? What, what's the mall? What, what were you going for? And, and I feel that's like my, no my other thing is give you info. if you, if you talk to the bartenders, not the, not the brewmaster or the owner, if you talk to the bartenders themselves, they're there every night slinging these beers, they're going to tell you the truth. They're not going to lie to you. They want the, they if want they the know tips. It. They know it. They know what they're looking for and what you're looking for. A good part, a good bartender will know. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So, yeah, you know, they'll know. So All Dave, right, Dave, bring it home, man. I go as light as possible. If you've got a cream ale, yes, or a Kolsch, or a blonde ale, not even a Pilsner. I just something nice and light because I, I kind of know what those are supposed to taste like. And if you've got a double IPA, there's a lot of room to hide. If you got a stout or a sour or something, there's a lot of stuff you can throw in there to, sh- to hide the fact that you're not a good brewer you take something like a Kolsch, you got nowhere to hide. Like yeah. if you suck, it'll be obvious from the first step. And so and I've, I've been to places where I've done that. It's like, you know, give me your Kolsch. And I ended up surreptitiously walking to the bathroom so I could kind of dump half of it down the toilet because it was not good. So that's kind of where I go. You probably felt great paying that bill too, knowing you poured half that beer out. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> I, I got a funny Kolsch story, you guys. Say real quick here. Uh, but so, so uh, Kolsch, the official beer and language of Cologne, Germany. Uh, <laughs> if you ever go to Cologne, Germany, mm-hmm. wow. Um, think of how think of like France's nationalism, uh-huh. with like obviously uh, German side history. So that that's kind of like Cologne. Uh, so though cool place right there on the Rhine River. It's 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 cool. It's it's on the western side of Germany. It's it's a good place to hit. Um, but they are extremely proud of their beer. And when you go to their breweries, they don't have breweries really on site. They have beer halls. So the beer hall is basically just a giant room with a bunch of picnic tables together. And everyone only drinks Kolsch. It's the only beer that they have. So if you go to a beer hall in Cologne, Germany, they're only going to have one beer. So they have about four beer halls there. And all of them only have the one beer that they're affiliated with, probably because they're owned by the brewery. So when you go there, uh, the beers are served in flutes. They're mm-hmm. like not like a champagne flute, but like a flute glass, like a, like a big mm-hmm. tall cylinder. Yeah. Um, I would challenge anyone who's had about nine or ten of those because they go down like water. You know, Dave would approve of that, but they they literally go down like like water <laughs> after about nine or ten. If you can actually tell the point. difference. But the real story is this. So they're very proud of, of, of their, their everything, as, as anyone should be. Uh, they're proud of their history, their, their culture, what, they're, what, what they bring to the beer community globally is Kolsch. The international Kolsch competition goes on. And what they do is they basically allow everyone, they, 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 as democratically as possible, they provide people with as, as many of the same ingredients as possible and say here here's your water here's everything here's your grain it's up to you to obviously go go mill your grain go put it together put take these ingredients and turn them into the best tasting beer possible (laughs) well this happens obviously as you imagined you produce the the wort the wort has to ferment to turn to beer it has to be carbonated before they can judge it the judging occurs and they're ready to announce the winners and it turns out that the winning Kolsch beer was an American brewery <laughs> called Mother Earth. As you can imagine, they weren't very happy about this. No, that's funny. So it's there you go. Strange. That's, 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 that's my Kolsch story. Sure. Right. Yeah. Mother Earth's good though too. I can, I can see them actually making the best Kolsch in the world. Well, it's yeah. funny. What Dave brings up, I think, is the most important thing is is are you are you sterilizing? Are you make, making all the right decisions? Are you trying to, you know, are you trying to hit the style, but are you also trying to make sure that you're worried about whether or not the flavor is going to come through? I think this happens in cooking. 
Well, and that's, that's the big thing with the coronavirus going on right now is that your cleanest location possible should be a brewery. Yeah. yeah. Everything back there should be sterilized 10 or 15 times before yeah. you even touch it. Yeah. You, you, no, you can sure. lick that fermenter. Yeah. You should be able to. <laughs> you won't get affected. I know. I know. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I talked about the, this swing, swing gears to like just things possibly opening up starting next week, at least at least in me and Kevin's part of, of the world. Um, He's still under lockdown. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, a little further behind you guys. Yeah, you're on the counties that's still locked down, right, Dave? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Dave. That's yeah. okay. You know, to be honest with you, I've spoken to so many breweries over the last couple of days, and the only one that I've ever heard that is actually going to be opening, opening is Intuition in Jacksonville. Really? Everybody else is, everybody else is, you know, I actually, just before we got on this, I was reading the post that uh, Three Daughters put up, and it was like, we could, but no. It's not um, worth the risk right now. Yeah, it's not worth the risk, and it's funny, I just published an interview with uh, the owner of Miami Brewing Company, and he called it right. It's like, you know, we don't want to be the place where somebody gets this and dies. No. Yeah. Yeah. We'll wait. We'll wait. Yeah. You, you don't want the Corona logger going out of your brewery. No. We were talking yeah. too about the brewers earlier. It's like, like imagine how terrible that'd be that you're opening your doors and then somebody gets infected there and dies. Right. Or they, tie, yeah. they tie it back to being at your location, whether you actually had anything to do with it or not. Yeah, that's that's the part that's it's hard. Um, I, yeah, I, obviously, people are going to have different opinions of it. I, I, this is why I, what I feel. Like I said, I think I, I talked a little, a little bit of this on the air. I don't know if I don't know if you're I think you were trying to reboot at the time, Kevin. Okay. I, look at it like, I actually, I've, I've thought about this a lot. I look at it like this. People are, there is actually not, people are, if you ask someone, oh, things are going to rush out. Oh, I'm not going to do anything because people are going to rush to, to open up, whatever. Actually, that's not true. People, I think, the, like, I actually think people are not going to rush to do, do stuff. You know, I think people are going to be scared as hell to do things. Mm -hmm. and they're not going to do anything. But that might make the time right now being the safest possible. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, because what will happen is it, no one will rush to do anything for like a week or two. Nothing will happen. Matter of fact, actually, technically, the next two weeks, uh, it, you know, we might actually like actually flatten the curve. Like things might actually go down. And then, so people will see that. So people will see that, and then they'll be like, "Oh, well, now look at that." Well, and things then, are going down. And then once and the mask does it, that's when you want to be home. <laughs> that's, right. that's when. That's when you want to be inside. Actually, you know that. So. <laughs> Yeah, so get those trailers filled and go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at with it, which is that's not prevailing wisdom. People don't feel that way at all. And and I would say the caveat to that is bigger cities, because bigger cities are 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 just more congested, more dense. Now the thing I will say to three dollars cases, even though St. Pete is smaller than Tampa, St. Pete is actually more densely populated. Mm -hmm. St. Pete's a weird case where it's small, but it's because everybody... people can't afford to live in Tampa, so they live in St. Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't yeah. want to hear that, but th there's probably That's... some small truth to that. Right, small truth to that. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a little bit of truth to that, and so that, you know, so St. Pete is actually very densely populated. So that so I can I can see three dollars not open, even though three dollars has a a lot of they have a lot of space. They can you can you can distance and oh, yeah. in three dollars. Yeah. But, yeah, absolutely, but yeah, you know, it's 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 nice to see them stick to their guns and be like, yeah, not right now. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and, and and how bad? Like, like, what's the number one motivating factor to open? I think right now it'd be it'd be money, and not not money as agreed, but money as in, man, I really want to make revenue so I can pay right. my people. Like, I, I want to get back to feeling normal, and yeah. and I think there's a there's, there's going to be like this overbearing uh, draw to want to do that and feel that way. But I really think in the end, it's about your brand is bigger than you. It, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than okay. your paycheck. It's bigger than everything. I also and, think a lot, of, a lot of these breweries that have the tap rooms are looking for that public feedback on what they're releasing. They're not getting that right now. They're getting strictly can sales. They're going out their door. Whereas before you could have someone, a beer release yesterday, you have three people say, you know, this is this, this is this, this is what I'm tasting. How can we tweak the recipe a little bit? Yeah. And now they're not getting there right now. They don't have that direct feedback that they usually do with their tap room. I, I, it's a lot to risk though, you know, to get it that is. back. Um, I, I, I would lean towards being highly conservative in, in whatever my 
release would be or whatever my going back to normal phase would be. But then again, it's easy to say that because I don't have the, the weight of what these other people right. do. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge people for what decisions they want to make, but I, ha I certainly have my opinion about how I would want to do things. And more than likely, I probably, even if I had a brewery, I wouldn't be able to solely make that decision unless I right. was hundred percent funding it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah, like I said, I think it's hard for libraries. I got to figure out what's the right thing to do. Um, you know, but given that, that reality that people are going to have be somewhat distrusting of going out public, that in a way that kind of guides your decision. Cause if you go out and you open up and like, I'm open, if I'm open and no one's showing up and people are only still only buying cans and crawlers or whatever, it doesn't really matter. I might as well just stay closed and just freaking, yeah. or not closed, obviously. But keep doing the take over. the drive through. And yeah. 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 I might as well just keep doing it. Keep doing what I'm doing. You what know? about moving the tasting room outside? Like literally taking it out of the AC and just eliminating half your parking lot and putting like tables, you yeah. know, 10 feet apart or whatever. Yeah. Why not? Actually, why not? It's, it's like, I, I, it's it's not so much the where you are it's 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 still you're out there and you're out with people i yeah I, I, I think you're at a lot lower risk that. though i think people feel safer and you're at lower risk if you do it that way yeah but i mean it's not gonna difference why, why not just difference? grab the stuff well just grab the stuff and go home because you know you're safe there yeah, yeah. well you, you can employ more people you can have people doing work. I Look, mean, if we have a bar down here called Park and Ocean, and if they were to start doing, you know, beer tastings out on the beach 10 feet apart, I'd be okay with that. I would go sit on the beach and hang out. That, that's what I think, too. Uh, I, I think that that would make people feel really good. Um, but and then you, you have a like, big staff walking between and tables. And, safe. Yeah. Well, well, I think what's honestly going to happen is you're going to need that social distancing space. It's just, I think doing this now is too soon because everybody on earth knows that the, that the, the, you know, we're still, we haven't quite, re at least in Florida, we haven't quite reached a peak. Right. And that we're opening because, you know, because, you know, because of business interests, you know, which I don't, I, I don't blame anybody for business is business. Business is apolitical, believe it or not, you know? And so, um, you the know, inconvenience is your haircut is, is done a little bit crazy. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, your beard yeah, right. is exactly. getting a little bit off. Yeah. yeah, it's all over the place right now. I'm going 70s Han Solo style here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think, but I think down the line, you are, if you have, if you're, you know, you're going to need more space in general, at least to start. So like if you are a, um, as, as it pertains to us, if you're a Three Daughters, if you're an 81 Bay, which has that cavernous space, more space than yeah. you need, um if you are what else is big that you can uh 26 oh. degree down here is pretty big they actually used to be they're in the space that used to be a uh wind dixie yeah if you can imagine that them are side. funky buddha funky yeah. buddha is massive any mm. given night I'm trying to think of who else has like a just like big well, down y'all way uh do south yeah yeah do south has a big one yeah. South of West, um, yeah, Miami Brewing, a further a north, huge one. Um, yeah, is really big. They have a massive tap room. So yeah, so you'll you'll be able to move people around. You know, um, you know, you'll you'll be able to move people around pretty easily there the ones i'll have an issue for us it'll be like 610 because it's smaller um yeah. if i brew the world um, <laughs> there's no room there <laughs> yeah yeah i love the death but and i uh, uh, no, love a little backyard it's patio space, space there. Shots, yeah. my dude yeah yeah so those you you know they'll have to get more creative yeah. you know but my, my thing is what about the service staff that has to be there what about the family that that service staff has? It's not just about the spacing between the customers. There is still staff that has to interact with the customers and with themselves. Yeah. And even if they're okay, who's at home that wouldn't be okay? I think they're going to operate with minimal service staff 
already. I think the fact that they can even employ a fraction of their service staff mm -hmm. is pretty much the goal that they have. They want to keep their best employees if they can. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you're there, right. There Everyone's going to be at risk just being inside that facility or in the parking lot somewhere. You're going to be at some level of risk already. I don't, there's not a perfect answer here, no matter yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, I want to switch people... gears right quick because uh, it actually kind of closes out. We always do like a, a, a question closing out. And yeah. so since you guys are in a different part of the state, when things truly open up, when things are, when everything is, uh, you know, flowers bloom, whatever, where are you going? Oh, man. Like, are you going to get the vaccination and then go right to a brewery? <laughs> I mean, it's their open. <laughs> I'm sure there's some rules against that, but you know, whatever. What, is like when everything is said and done, I would love to do a nice trip down to Winwood. Okay. I can hit like five breweries within yeah. three blocks of each other, great yeah. restaurants, yeah. great yeah. sights to see. Yeah. Like you can't beat that area. I, and I agree. The beer is amazing. It's, it's, it's awesome. Once you're there, it's phenomenal. Right. It's a little bit of a drive to get to wherever you're going once you're done. Once yeah, you're but once done. you find a parking spot and you're centrally located, you're good. Yep. I agree. For sure, for sure. I, I kind of want to head over to Cape Coral because the Cape Coral Fort Myers area is, is really got this little niche, little scene going on that I absolutely love. I do love uh, me some crazy bingo. <laughs> Steve and I was just on a, on a virtual bottom shower with a eight foot brewing, which very few people have really heard of. Brewing. And I think they are one of the best unknown breweries in the state of Florida. I'm just going to state it. Um, and it's funny because I just had their Kolsch a couple of nights ago. They actually sent oh. it to, or no, not their Kolsch, their Hellas. Yeah, their Hellas was huh. awesome. Okay. Oh, so amazing. Um, yeah, it just, I, I love those little places, I think. I, um, I'm probably not going to be going anywhere anytime soon because I have a rather large shipment coming in from Accomplice Cider Works tomorrow, which I'm enjoying the whole ship to my house. So, See, you're living my Tabor life now. Yeah, I know. I'm just, yeah, I don't really need to worry about too much. Except I'm paying for mine. You don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I paid for this. Trust oh, me. Oh, did you? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's probably where I would go, is I'm really kind of hankering that sort of the West Coast, because there's a lot of great stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, cool. I love Steve pulling the Dunedin card, but uh, I'm going to oh. probably... Uh, Man, I don't know. I, I, I've been wanting to go to up, up Central. I mean, I do think Cycle makes phenomenal beer. Uh, and I think even though I try not to, to constantly wave the flag, I do think that Green Bench makes pretty solid beer as well. They do. They do. But, but I really miss Ale and Witch. I think, I think if I could sit outside at night, listen to someone play some live music and feel Ale safe and being in some place like Ale and Witch, I feel like I'd be back to normal. I yeah. can't wait for yeah. Grand Central Brew House to open. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, That's I'm for any place along the way who wants me to come in and try their brews and end at the Ale and Witch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, it's got to be a, a combination of food and beer because that's what I'm mm -hmm. kind of missing. I, mean, I do it in my house all the time, but I, you know, and honestly, I would be good with. Oh, man, I, I would be good with going, I, I'm going to Zydeco. Zydeco, yeah, that's our, buddy, our buddy Paul, you know, like, yeah. like I, getting a Pablo, some of the grits, mm -hmm. and I, I, you know. That mac and cheese was to die for. Yeah, yeah, and or the mac and cheese. That, the dish that's like, it's like all the olives smashed together was actually quite awesome, too, mm. with, with the, uh, the crackers. Uh, no, the food there is good. Have yeah. you done you lately yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we've had we've had them on our show actually uh, for the uh, the brewmaster. He's the guy from. Uh, we've from been to war with Tim Shackleton. Trust me. Shackleton. We've been oh, to Tim. Tim's amazing. He Tim's is so. Tim is one of the most underrated brewers. In I agree. State, and I don't. I agree. And it's the, funny because you know, everybody talks about hardcore about quality. Hardcore about yeah. consistency. Hardcore. Yes. Hardcore. Like and it's big time, man. And it's amazing. It's like, oh, Tampa talks about everything. It's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh my gosh, Hayden Springs. And I'm like, but have you gone a hundred feet behind you? 
Yes. Yeah, oh, it's that close. <laughs> man, yeah. A little bit a little bit of lack of diversity, I think, on the on the beer menu. I think that, that's been one of the things that's the hindrance. Because like people come there and they're ready to have this nice high end meal and they're focused on having their food items or having their, their pre meal cocktails. They're not thinking about beer as being like a, a, a sidecar or yeah, yeah. of their it meal. It depends on when you go. Because what's neat, because Eulalia is owned by Columbia, so they mm -hmm. have this phenomenal winery relationship so when you go to the back he's got barrels upon barrels yeah. if you go when they've got the right barrel stuff out and the problem is is that he, I mean, it goes so fast he's got some phenomenal stuff well oh, tim tim can brew no, no doubt oh yeah it's it's you just gotta be there at the right time you know they, they're pairing <laughs> everything and, and their focus is what's what you're eating at the restaurant they're not trying to sell it in stores or, or other bars or whatever so yeah. they so their range doesn't need to necessarily be as wide because they have they, they they're trying to suit customers it's 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 matter of fact it's their beer is literally a compliment it's a, it's it's for the people who come in there and eat yeah. there now, mind you, their beer is so good, you could freaking just go in there, like, <laughs> just stroll in there and just have a beer. <laughs> like, you know, you don't even have to eat anything. Like, matter of fact, the show that we did, we actually didn't, I don't know if we ate there, actually. I think we literally tried a bunch of their beer and we toured and all that other stuff. We actually, I, we, I, don't, I don't remember, this is a few years ago. We, I don't know that we ate there, but it, we didn't need to. And I love, and I love you lately. I love, love, like, you know, but their beer is phenomenal. Tim's awesome. Tim mm -hmm. Tim pointed us out in, while we're in line for Brewers Ball, which is yeah, yeah. It was the highlight of my day. Absolutely. He was like, he was like hey. I know. The I, fact I, that he, he remembers us, my name, but, but he knew that yeah, we talked before. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, Mitch, what's uh, up? And, yeah. and we say every time, Johnny, that was first class treatment, which is not surprising that they're even tied to the yeah. Columbia because oh, it's a yeah. great yeah. restaurant that I love with tremendous history. I think their food is underrated. Mm -hmm. And Ulele is great. Uh, I've been here oh, yeah. at least three times. I've never had a bad experience there once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You ladies, I highly recommend it. It's there. There's other places here in Tampa that are like okay, high end restaurants or whatever. But you are kind of doing yourself a disservice if you don't go to Ulele if you're looking for a really good meal. And, here, so. and it's easy to miss too from the beer scene. David's right. From the beer scene, it's very, very easy to miss because you don't think of going there for beer. And that's that's kind of what I think is. That's the part that's missing, I think, is you don't, you don't really have like a line shining on what Tim's doing. And they're even giving him probably a very limited, um, uh, limited space on what he mm -hmm. could be doing. Well, yeah, because they're, well, their focus obviously is so much on food. And so they're not reaching out to like the, the beer community at large, really. I mean, at one point they were doing beer festivals. Like I, I remember, I remember meeting Tim at a beer fact, I think that's kind of how this all got kicked off. We actually met him at a beer festival, but it was, but there, because the Columbia restaurant is what it is here in Tampa, yeah. you don't, when you want to do an interview with Tim, you actually don't do it. You, you don't, yeah, he's not, he, there's a layer did you get you don't just get right to Tim like like you would do with most brewers yes. like you actually had to talk to and I don't know if Jeff Hauk is still there good good man oh, Jeff yeah. Hauk is a food oh, critic yeah. here locally um or was um you talked to Jeff and then from Jeff you actually talked to you I thought you know you talked to and they, and they make a decision if they're like hey your podcast is worth you know doing this or whatever and they've been gracious enough they were great to, to meet with us and that's honestly one of the, one of the best things we've done with this show easily yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, well, we gotta wrap this up. Yeah. Um, this was, you know, this was fun. I got to chug a beer live, yeah. um, which I've done. I survived my chug. Yeah. Like, like I haven't killed over yet, so. Yeah. We don't have any great desire lot. to do it again, but you know, it is what it is. You're still here, Kevin. So I, that's great. So, <laughs> all right. Well, well, Dave, Steve, thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, just, just thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah exactly exactly so we'll uh you know yeah <laughs> yeah like, so it's so, what so, yeah all right so all right all right so so um so we are uh the glasses are empty mics are off this is crack your ballers